And it gets your face like warmed up. Super serious. For nothing fun or funny ever, 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 ever happens. This is a super serious thing. I don't even like dogs. Super serious. All right. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Super Serious Dog Podcast with Courtney Cuellar and myself, uh, Misha Bielitsky. How are you doing, Courtney? I'm doing pretty good. I'm having a good day. Yeah? Productive day? Very productive day. After a week of anxiety, you've had a productive day? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's how it goes sometimes, you know? You build these things up in your head like they're these gigantic projects, and then then one day you just sit down and you start working on it, and you're like, oh. This isn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. That's basically the same boat I'm in. Last week was just like anxiety-ridden, and I was just trying to escape, and only focus on like today Misha problems and not tomorrow Misha problems as much as possible. But this week is uh, coming out hot, coming out hot. It's very productive. Cleaned up a room, did all kinds of shit. Awesome. Awesome. It's good to hear. (laughs) It's fun to be productive. Um, It is. And you know, what's funny about being productive too, is like, I noticed myself having even little rituals, right? Like there's little things that I always do every time I clean so it got me thinking, what other rituals do I have? Like with your dogs? Like with my dogs, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, the word rituals, because like for me, that word for some reason just like immediately goes to like witchcraft. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking like rituals, like you're, you know, inhaling Satan or something. And, right. But, it, but right. It, it, that word has so many other meanings, you know, it's right. like, it's just a ritual. It's a thing you do <laughs> every time. It's kind of like Inhale. routine, but you know, it's... It's more of a ritual. It's yeah. What are some of your rituals with your dogs? So I'm going to tell you first a total non-dog related one, and then I'll tell you some (laughs) dog related ones. Okay. So it's really funny whenever I get into my car, like especially if I'm like in my day and I'm going from lesson to lesson, or I have like just stuff to do. I'm running errands, whatever. Without fail, I will always like get in my car and be like, "Cool, put my car in in part drive or reverse or whatever's applicable," and then go fuck, I don't know where I'm going. So I'll have to like click it back into park and then like do my GPS and like whatever, fasten my seatbelt, do all the normal things that you do before you start your car and put it freaking reverse. But you Um, just go straight to, let's get in gear. We're going to go. Yes. And like, and my foot's on the brake. It's not like I'm like trying to go and do things at like 12, you know, two different, 10 things at one time. It's just, that's just what I do. I always, and it, it like frustrates me sometimes because I'm like, why do I, why do I always do that? Just slow down, Misha. Just slow do you, do down. you ever start driving or do you always catch yourself? No, I always catch myself. Always. That's, that's the worst part is like, I know what I'm doing isn't supposed to happen. I know that's completely out of order and you're supposed to do it in a different order altogether. But like, I just, my ADHD just can't, it's just, is determined to just go. Um, but a fun dog one I have. So um, it's not really a ritual. It's just more like a subconscious thing I do, which I guess is sort of a ritual. Just, you know, it's I'm not conscious of it. But whenever I want my dogs to like stop doing something or if I'm like with a client dog and they're jumping all over me and I want them to do something, I do this very like choir-like clasp of my hands where I'll show you. I go like this. <laughs> so you like fold them on top of each other dude it's just like <laughs> choir it's just like they teach you in choir where you're like oh it's, <laughs> it's freaking hilarious um and it's just like a, it's a way for me to like get my hands so they're not dangling at my side so the dog can't like jump and nip at it or whatever and it's a nice like I, sometimes i'll do kind of like a cheerleader class but usually it's honestly the cheer the the choir thing that's actually probably nicer body language than what I do because I just cross my arms. <laughs> and when I do that, I I have resting bitch face because I always have that and I just look really mad. So if I come in and someone's dog is jumping on me and I just cross my arms and don't say anything, they probably think I'm an asshole. So I try to consciously uncross. I'll, I'm going to try that if you don't mind. I'm going to yeah, just steal stuff. that from you and just stand like this because it'll probably help my posture too. I just stand like mm-hmm. this and be like, okay, we have a problem here. We need to work on this. Do that so far. Yeah, please feel free to take that. You you can take all my dumb little quirks. Feel free to take like the park reverse thing too while we're at it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, well. 
<laughs> I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. I, I can't say I'm not guilty of it. I've definitely done that park reverse. Oh, crap. I got to go in back because I don't know where I'm going. Yeah, I've, I've definitely done that. I'm also guilty of driving off and five minutes into my drive going, wait, where am I going? <laughs> I think you have ADD too. <laughs> no way. <laughs> um, that's that's so really funny. Do you have any like feeding rituals? Like when you're preparing your dog's food, do you have like a specific pattern you go through or something you make your dogs do while you get it ready? Yeah, for sure. Um, one thing that I, I do that sort of came out of a, ne- out of a necessity. So B town, my little trouble loves food. Like he, I have to constantly just fight obesity with him because like a, he's small and he loves treat training and stuff like that. So I use treats a lot when I'm teaching him something new, but B he just always acts like he's starving. He could be like, honestly, if I let him, he would be 30 pounds when really he's supposed to be like 12. So, um, he gets really, really excited. And within the last year he started like kind of testing the waters and just going out to like straight up just yelling just blah food is here as soon as i start specifically it's when i start mixing something into their food because rocky's really picky so i have to like do wet food and stuff um and so like his ritual has changed a lot um it used to just be like ah, go hang out on place or whatever when we moved into the house we're in right now that kind of stopped so i didn't really need to do it and then it became Um, okay, right before I add an add in to Ricky's food, you go into the other room. Now that doesn't work anymore. Then it becomes like sometimes Lee will kind of distract him, um, or do something. Now it's pretty much just a matter of like me cutting it off and just being like, zip it, like doing the whole, uh, um, what do you call it? Austin Powers. Zip it, (laughs) zip it, zip it. Um, but I, I also like, I, I think, I think we may have like aged ourselves a little bit Probably. talking about Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> Only like a select few people are going to get that. Cause I'm pretty sure there are people That's who true. like never watched Austin Powers that don't get it. Think of it as yep. an old movie. Yeah, okay. totally. Have you Sorry. seen that? Have you seen that video online of that girl? Uh, it's some girl who's wearing like a doors or like an ACDC t-shirt or something. And they play the, a song by that band and then um, they're like, hey, tell me who this artist is. And she's like, I have no idea. I don't, I don't know. Is that Drake or something? <laughs> like, it's hilarious because she's wearing the T-shirt. So common. Uh, so, so great. Anyway, so you pull the Austin Powers on him. You tell him to zip it. Yep. Um, and basically kind of from there, right before I put his food down, um, I do a combination of things because he gets – too smart for things too quickly. Um, and he picks up on those little patterns. So like it, sometimes it's a down, sometimes it's down. And I want you to come to uh, Chalupa, which is the word for his middle where he has to come stand between my feet and face the same direction as me. Um, or I'll just do like just a, a random combination of tricks. So that's basically our feeding ritual. And, right. and and Rocky just gets his food because he's yeah, a Yeah, Rocky boy. just sits. He sits or he lays down. Sometimes I don't even make him do that. Yeah. It kind of just depends on how he's feeling. He's old and he's cute, so he just gets cute tacks all the time. <laughs> nice. Um, what do you do with your dogs? You have a bunch of dogs. So what I do. do, you do I, I have five. So my ritual has also uh, grown out of necessity. Uh, I've had different rituals throughout my time of owning dogs and um, – So I'm the one I'm on right now has seemed to work the best for this group of dogs. And what I do is I stand up and the dogs always know when I'm standing up to go get the food. It it doesn't matter if I try to fake them out or anything. It that doesn't work. They They know know which time I'm getting the food. So I stand up and undoubtedly Ruka will jump up and go, Oh shit, this is the time. She's getting the food and she'll do like her little whine and spin in a circle. And Mm -hmm. I will tell her to go lay down. Ruka I, could be a hundred pounds if she wanted to as well. Absolutely. Um, so she's usually the one that's told to go lay down. And then everybody knows that it's food time because I've told Ruka to go lay down. Um, sometimes Ruka will be a bit of a turd about going and laying down. She'll like sit right where she's at and whine at me or she'll spin in a circle or she'll go jump on like three different beds and whine at me. She's also the oldest, um, so we tolerate some of her annoying habits, but eventually she lays down, and then I continue to walk out of the room to go prepare the food, and that is 
where I actually had quite a few issues and had to get this routine down solid or ritual down solid Mm -hmm. because when I would leave the room and start pouring the food, the dogs would start flipping out because they could hear the food and Nelson would jump up and run across the room and try to like peek into the other room where I'm at to like watch (laughs) me pour the food. Um, Phoebe, the so nosy. the young border collie, would try to boss Pepper around. She decided that Pepper, she just picked Pepper. Um, it was an she issue. She better we had. not. She better not. That is my favorite dog. Just so y'all know, Pepper is Courtney's like terrified dog. Like she clearly missed some crucial socialization when she was a puppy. So sometimes, just out of nowhere, something will just horrify her, and she'll just freeze and lock. And she is most my most favoritest of Courtney's dogs. She's a goofball. Um, She's a goofball. I guess in in the pack, like strength, she would be considered a weak link, um, which is why Phoebe probably chose to uh, try to control her. And right. um, nothing happened, uh, but my, my husband would watch the dogs when I went to go get the food, and he was like, hey, Phoebe is being rude to Pepper. So it took lots of consistency of me coming back in the room and being like, hey, I'm not going to continue process the process of making your food until everyone is laying down and not whining, Ruka. Mm-hmm. Specifically, Ruka, shut up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, the food is prepared in the other room and then uh, I come into the room and everyone has to hold their down and basically I feed the calmest dogs first. So um, by doing that, the dogs have seen through repetition, the calmer you are, the faster you get food. Uh, and I just say their name and set the bowl down and they can have their food. Yeah. And then and then they all eat and they go out and go potty. And that's our ritual. Nice. I like that. That's, that's a pretty operant way of doing things where like <clears throat> their actions have consequences, right? And the consequence is that if you're calm, you get your food first. If you're Mm -hmm. not calm, you get your food last eventually, whenever that is when you calm down. It's probably something I could employ with with B-Town for sure. Uh, Instead of just spazzing them up. There were definitely days where like I stood in the living room holding the bowls for like five minutes because Ruka was whining and Nelson kept jumping up and being like, I'm going to, I'm going to do my tricks. And it's, Mm -hmm. it is very cute that he will offer those behaviors, but it's not what I'm asking for at this time. I'm asking for calmness because that's the ritual I want, because I don't want you guys scarfing down your food. I don't want this to be an over amplified time. And I don't want Phoebe or anyone to think that they have the right to boss around another dog. Like I've said before, my five dogs don't fight with each other. And I really like that. And it's my job to make sure that it stays that way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, that made me think of a, a little post-feeding ritual I have with B-Town. And that is whenever Rocky's done eating his food, like even if I didn't put a mix in in Rocky's food bowl, I always let B-Town go vacuum. <laughs> and the, the command is vacuum. And he gets to go like just lick up whatever's fallen on the floor or is left in the bowl. Usually it's just spit, but sometimes Rocky leaves some stuff behind or whatever. Um, But it's really funny. And it's gotten to the point now where like, because Rocky was, um, he had surgery two weeks ago. And so like we had to switch him over to wet food and he was kind of picky and like hit or miss. So there was like several days where Boston didn't get to do that at all because Rocky still had a ton of food left. I'm not going to let you eat all that. Like that's not for you. Um, and uh, yeah, and so I, he just like sat on his little bed like, expecting, even like an hour later, he'd like go back to his bed and be like, can I vacuum now? I'm like, buddy, there's nothing for you to eat here. <laughs> like, <laughs> So yeah, that might be something problematic that they have to fix later on. But for now, it's just, you know, let's, yeah, we dogs, spoil our dogs sometimes. They, they really pick up on our rituals and our routines. It, it was funny. I remember a long, 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 long time ago um, when I had my first dog and I wasn't a dog trainer and I was a bartender. Um, I had crate trained my dog. And so she would go into the crate um, when I'd go to work. That was where she went when I went to work. And that was just our ritual. And I started to notice that when I would be getting ready for work, like putting my makeup on and getting dressed and stuff, I would look around and I didn't know where my dog was at. And she was in her kennel. Because she realized, like, oh, I, I know what comes next. Like, yeah. next I go in the kennel. Yeah. And I, I think I would also feed her. I would, like, put her in the kennel <laughs> and feed her and leave for work. Right. Um, so that that was our ritual, like I said, many, many moons ago. Yeah. 
That's a really good one, especially now as like people are starting to think about going back to work and how to prevent separation anxiety. It's a really easy uh, ritual to implement. And it, even if you don't have a crate or anything like that, you could use it with a place or bed or just like a, a generic spot, right? Um, it, it can be wherever you normally feed your dogs. If you have like bowls out in the kitchen or whatever, you can just make that your routine where the last thing you do before you go, like maybe just go for a walk in the morning or something. And the very last thing you do is you put down their food and let them eat. Obviously don't do that if your dogs are fighting. <laughs> That's bad. Right. Unless right. Don't they're leave safely your, separated. Don't leave your dogs unseparate, unsupervised with a bunch of food out. Like don't do that. Right. That's, that's not what she's saying. Right. But if you have one dog or your dogs are fine and they eat normal and or whatever, right? That kind of stuff. Um, that'd be a really good one. You have a pretty cool um, ritual for your car. I like watching your your vehicular re- rituals with your dogs. You should tell me about it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah. I, I When I let my dogs out of the car, they come out one at a time and they sit. And everybody's... By name, right. yeah. Um, their name is their release out of the car, you know. I yeah. does that have downfalls? Yeah, sometimes, but I work around them. Um, but yeah. I call them out one at a time, and and they sit and they wait for me to unload everybody, and then I get all my stuff together, whatever I'm taking with me or whatever, and, and mm-hmm. I load up, and then and then we go do whatever we're gonna do, which is usually yeah. hiking. Yeah. It's really fun though to watch because like, of course, just like any dog, doesn't matter how many years of training you've put into them, like they're going to mess up sometimes. Oh yeah. Either because we haven't practiced or whatever, but it's just, it's always really cool to see like, you know, Phoebe or somebody try to pop out of the van a little too soon. And then you're like, nope, Phoebe, get back in there. And like, sometimes you have to start the whole process all over again. But I mean, imagine that just picture five dogs right now. Imagine if you had five dogs right now, listener. Just picture it. Like, could you do that? Probably not. It takes practice. It does take um, a lot of practice. And and you're right. My dogs, I mean, they don't do it perfect every time. Yeah. No rituals go perfectly every time. But yeah. I'm I I try to stay as consistent in them as possible because dogs thrive on that. They they love that routine and that right. structure and and knowing that, you know, X, Y equals the same thing every time and yeah. so um is it challenging for them like we're when we're at a new park or it just rained or something yeah they get out of the car and they sit and their noses are going all over the place and they're like i really want to go and i understand they really want to go but impulse control is important mm. and we're all in this together um and like you've also seen me be lazy about it and you've seen what happens oh. when i just totally let all of my dogs run out of the car all at once it's as chaotic as you imagine it would be <laughs> but I mean, they listen and, and they come back. So, yeah. and, and I'm not yeah. like a militant person that, you know, all yeah. my dogs have to be in commands all the time, but I do try to have some but ritual they should be under some control. understanding. Right, right. And they, they have to have the responsibility <laughs> to be like, like they're off leash 99% of the time when you do that. Right. Like, right. otherwise you just call them all out. Who cares? They're on leash. Doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, especially when you're going to a park or something like that, I think it's super important. Yeah. Um, Boston has, uh, we have like sort of a bathroom ritual for whenever we go outside in the mornings. I thought you were going to say when you go to the bathroom, I'm like, that's cute. I have one of those. He does does like to come hang out with me. He'll come and like lay on the rug uh, in the bathroom, but no, his bathroom ritual. I don't really have to do it so much anymore. He's, he's figured it out after a year of living in this house. But, um, (laughs) <laughs> when we first would go outside in the morning, he like refused to go to the bathroom. He's like, no, I want to chase squirrels or I want to play fetch. It was really fetch um, was the biggest thing. And he'd go over to where his ball usually sits on the windowsill over here. And I'd be like, no dude, go potty. And he would just like fight me and fight me on it. And, and I would just kind of stand there and ignore it. Of course, my fiance would totally enable it and like throw it for him. Sometimes I'm like, that's your problem. If you want to do that? Fine. I don't. I want him to go to the bathroom first thing. And then sometimes if I was in a hurry, depending on, on whether or not, I basically taught him the difference between like go potty, which is at least go pee. And then, yes, <laughs> you're doing the class. <laughs> I am. I'm like, I don't know what to do with my hands. I'm going to try this Misha thing and clasp them together. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um 
<laughs> so yeah, so I taught him like go potty means like go at least pee or both, right? Go poop and pee. And then go take a dump is like, no, I'm, you need to do everything. And then I would play fetch. Sometimes I would basically like let him go pee, play a little fetch, and then tell him go take a dump. And then once he kind of understood that like phrase, go take a dump, <laughs> Um, then I started peppering it in sooner, um, especially if I was like kind of in a hurry, if I had places to be, I was going for a hike that morning, something like that. Um, but yeah, it was, it was fun. He never knew whether the fetch was going to come before the dump or after the dump. (laughs) Ah, the joys in life, you know? (laughs) I know, right? It's really funny too. It seems like so childish how much dog trainers talk about poop and how much we look at poop. Uh, I have looked at so much poop in my day. Uh, I When I worked at a boarding like daycare place, just... I frequently had pictures of poop on my phone. And I would send them to my coworkers because yep. you need a second opinion sometimes. You know? yeah, like... and I, and I'm kind of colorblind, so sometimes you can't tell quite the shade of a color, but you know it's off. Right. And you're like, hey, could you look at this? Do you, is that weird? Is that a problem? Do we need to call yep. the owner? Um, yep. Yeah. yeah, I've I've definitely been scrolling through my phone before. I've been like, wow, I have a lot of pictures of feces right now. Like, this is problematic. <laughs> I swear I don't have a thing for it. It's just part of my job. You don't understand. I kind of noticed that um, at one point I had significantly more pictures of other people's dogs than my own dogs and cats on my phone. I was like, I should probably rectify that. So I started taking more pictures of them. I have had that problem because um, I have I have five. And so I don't have as many pictures as you would think of just the five of them. I have pictures of the five of them and a bunch of other dogs or a bunch of other right. dogs and like one of them. Um, but I, I'm i always trying to find like pack pictures and they always include other dogs, which is great because, you know, sure. that means yeah. I have lots of dogs. But yeah, I uh, have significantly more pictures of other people's dogs than my own. Yeah, for sure. Um, whenever you're, uh, hiking with your dogs, we have, we kind of had some rituals that we did. Like, um, there's this one spot in this park that we go to all the time called Walnut Creek Park, where there's like man-made stairs, but they're, it's still like rough. It's still rugged, you know? Um, and it goes down to a Creek with like some stepping stones and then the trail continues. So that's somewhere we're like, Courtney would always do this. So obviously when I would hike with her, I would do it too. But essentially, we would, like, make all the dogs stop. We'd make them pose, take a photo, fix all of the stragglers who are constantly popping up over and over again out of their sits, not looking, etc. And then sometimes in that ritual, um, depending on kind of the energy of the group um, and kind of their comfort with one another and just how well they were listening, we'd either call them and release them one at a time or we just let them go ham and let them go you know, and chaotically run around and stuff. That was always a really fun, fun ritual. That one is really fun. I would like, my goal was to improve my ritual of calling them one at a time because Mm. um, I am like everybody else on social media. I compare myself to other people probably far more than I should. Um, But if, if you listener uh, do follow other dog hikers and you see their super cool videos of them having like 20 dogs sitting in a line and they individually call one dog at a time and the dog calmly stands up and walks off to go enjoy the nature. Um, those videos blow my mind. Uh, Mm -hmm. so I can do some cool stuff with dogs, but I can't, I, I probably could do that, but I'm not capable of that at this current moment. And that blows me away. So that's a ritual I aspire to. Um, I can, I can barely do that with my own dog sometimes, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. That's really hard to do. It takes um, a lot of practice. It does take a lot of practice. But yeah, that was always a fun ritual. And of com- it, basically why I did it before on the times where I wasn't just taking pictures is for safety. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of a right. steep hill. Right. And I don't want all the dogs like bombarding down there without me because there could be someone else down there with their dog enjoying themselves, kids, whatever. So I would have everybody stop and I'd walk down and kind of check out the surroundings before releasing the dogs down to enjoy them. Mm-hmm. Um, or keeping them in a more controlled, like, Hey, we're just going to move past here. Cause there's some dogs and kids playing over there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. More hiking tips. Yeah, yeah more, more yeah. hiking tips. You get those in all the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we do a lot of it. So, 
not as much lately, especially as it's getting hotter and stuff, but, yeah. but still, um, for me just to go back to the, the car <clears throat> rituals thing. So like, um, I have a ton of kennels in my car, not to say that Courtney doesn't, but like my dogs are usually almost always kenneled. And even if they're not, I still make them wait and pause. And then I call them out and they always have to sit when they come out as well. But like for, for client dogs or dogs who are new to the ritual, I don't just ask for just a sit. I sit there and I sit there and I sit there and I sit there as long as it takes. And I wait for them to look at me. So that way they start to learn that the cue for us to continue on our adventures for you to stop looking at all the cool stuff that's around us. Cause there's tons of cool stuff. I get it. Focus on me. Um, and so it's a really easy way to kind of like start that concept of getting them to take responsibility for their actions a little bit more and put the burden of attention on them. Um, that's something in general I'm trying to do with, with all my clients and that kind of stuff too, is like, no, that, let let the dog figure out how to get to that answer. Stop making kissy noises and stop trying to ask for things. Don't tell them sit. Just wait for them to sit. It's yeah. so much more powerful. To, to teach a human to use this incredible skill that they have called patience yeah. does worlds of wonders with working with your dog. Like I know a lot of us think we don't have any of it, but yeah. I promise you have a lot more of it than you realize. Um, and if you use it when working with your dog, you're going to go so much farther because I mean, I do that too with a new dog um, and hiking. Well, with most new dogs, there's always exceptions on things I'll do, but mm -hmm. you know, I'll hang out with my, with my dogs around and show them like, we're not going to invade that new dog space that you don't know. We're not going right. to run around and smell everything and you're not going to jump on me and we're just going to stand here. And I don't require them to hold the sit uh, on their first day, but I do wait for their state of mind to shift and for them to start looking at me like, Hey lady, are we going to do anything? And I'm like, Oh, glad you asked. Yeah. I actually have a whole plan. If you right. want to come with me, that right. could be really cool. You know what that reminds me of Courtney? What does that remind you of Misha? Our P Patreon episode where we talk about rules and boundaries. Oh, <gasps> yeah. That's right. That's we got right. rules and boundaries. Yeah, so yeah, if you, wanna hear, if you want to hear more about that kind of stuff, we go into a ton more detail on that episode. So you can check it out. Patreon slash Super Serious Dog Podcast. Yeah, it's like five bucks a month or something. And you get all of this, all of this stuff from us. All of our conversations. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, before we go, Courtney, I have a question for you. Oh, okay. Do you have, do you have like a, a, since you, especially since you have a ton of dogs, do you have like a bark bark subscription or like, do you ever like just buy them a ton of like toys and bones and stuff? And do you have a ritual of like how you disperse them and who gets what or anything like that? Um, I have a real dog box subscription. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Um, because. It's not a sponsor, just so y'all know. It's not sponsored. <laughs> it's not sponsored, but. <laughs> if it wanted to be, I'm just saying. No, I, I wholeheartedly support them. Um, check them out on Instagram if you don't know what I'm talking about. Real dog box. It's really cool. Um, they're all real animal parts, and it's good It's good for your dog to have that. No not, I'm not going to get into all that right now. Check them out. They're awesome. They have all the information there. So I do have a ritual in giving those out. Um, I get the, the chew, the box of chews, and um, we go outside. And I hand out the chews and everybody gets one and they go off to their own space and they are required to focus on their chew. And if anybody gets bored with their chew and starts to try and go check out someone else's, I'm right there supervising. And I say, uh-uh, you have yours. Um, and I make sure they, they enjoy their own. That's cool. Do you ever do that inside? Like if it's crappy weather, do you always do it outside? I always do it outside now out of necessity because Phoebe... <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> it's always Phoebe. Always you know? Phoebe. Always Phoebe. Um, Phoebe has a strange aversion to dead things. Uh, dead animals freak her out. She, she still has a hard time in some pet stores, um, like in oh, the smell. aisle with all the chews that mm. have like the bullhorn, the horns and stuff like that. Um, it makes her very uncomfortable. She'll still listen to me. She'll still engage with me, but she's uncomfortable. Like it's undeniably uncomfortable. Um, so there have been some things I, I tried to get into raw feeding and that was a whole other catastrophe we can talk about at some time. Um, but she will be, kind of, it, it looks like she's disgusted by it. Um, she will, you know, flick her mouth at it and lick it and like no. 
try and like push it away from her and, and stuff like that. Um, so I, I did do the, the chews inside the first couple times I got them and she turned her nose up at them. She didn't want them. And so, you know, tough love. All right. You don't get one. Uh, so what she decided to do was go around to where the other dogs had been chewing them. Like they had already finished them and they had moved on to go get some water or whatever, be dogs. And she went over there and peed, uh, on where they had been chewing, which was oh my God. <laughs> a dog bed. Um, I mean, it had a cover on it. I could wash it, but she did it like three times and it annoyed me. Weird. And yeah, uh, it's weird. It's, it's annoying. If you have any tips on it, I am open to them. Anybody, any listeners, yeah. anybody, if you know why my dog insists on marking over where a uh, chew was chewed, um, please help. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's, that's super interesting. So we do it outside now and yeah. she can mark on it if she wants to. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. That's a, that's, I'm gonna have to noodle on that one for a little bit. Um, because obviously doing it outside is just a management tool. It's not solving the problem, but it is managing it. So it's, um, uh, and she won't, she won't eat anything slimy. She won't eat anything with feathers or fur on it. Um, like I can get her to eat chicken feet, but I have to hold it for her while she starts it. And then she gets part of way into it. And she's like, Oh, this, this is, is delicious. delicious. I had no idea. Yeah. Um, look, just sit her down in front of like Anthony Bourdain's right. cooking, you know, his show where he travels, rest in peace, etc. But yeah, just be like, look, he's eating ants and crickets and stuff. Right. Like, you'll be fine. <laughs> Expand your palate, girl. Um, there was also a time we went to a ranch, a, fa- uh, a ranch with the family, and she came, and they had an area where they like uh, process the deer, mm-hmm. um, and she was terrified of that area, like unbelievably sketched out by that area. And my guess, best guess was because it smelled like you know blood yeah. and dead dead stuff. So yeah, well, good instincts on her part, I guess. Right? I, yeah, like, stay away like, from well, death. Yeah. Danger, death, danger, dead stuff. Get away Bad, from it. That's death. I can't totally fault her for it. Right. It's weird. That is super weird. Well, this is fun. That's all the time we have for today. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening. Um, like we said earlier, please check us out on Patreon. We'd love um, you know, for you guys to support us, of course. But also you get some pretty cool extra content that goes into a little bit more detail about training and all that stuff. Um if not, um, we obviously really appreciate your support. So if you, um, you know, like a video, please like it on YouTube or wherever um, you listen to your podcasts on. And tell your friends. Um, tell your friends, share it with them, share it on your Facebook feed, all that kind of stuff. And send us questions. I really want to do another question episode. We've gotten a few yeah. good ones, but I want to make sure we have enough to fill an episode. So yeah. if you have anyone, send us them. It can yeah. be as serious as you want them to be or as, as- silly silly as silly. you want it to be <laughs> <laughs> we will answer it unless we will. it's appropriate i um, mean <laughs> we'll see <laughs> give All us right, a guys. try <laughs> thank All you right. guys so much and we'll see you next time bye